I think we'll be just okay. <laughs> and welcome. Hi, I'm author Grace Rolson. I'm happy to be here and giving you tools to help if you are a mother co-parenting or forced to co-parent with your ex abuser who's a narcissist or if you're a mom in a custody battle with your ex abuser who is a narcissist this is a tool that i'd love to introduce to you uh amy says and i have the co-founder here and are you with us ann i am here thank you grace Great. We're so, I'm so glad to have you because this was recommended on my private Facebook groups for moms. And if you don't know what they are, you can look in the comments or the description if you want to come join my private groups for moms, co-parenting with a narcissist or in a custody battle with a narcissist. I have five books for moms. I'm a survivor, an author, and a life coach. And I'm going to host this live webinar uh, to demonstrate a new tool that's out there that can really help us de-escalate, disarm, and reduce the drama and the conflict, which is what I always say. We want to get peace and protection for ourselves and our children. So if you're with us, welcome. And just a quick disclaimer, it's not direct advice. And if you need professional DV help, there I use the DV counselor. I use two. I used one from one agency, one from another through my whole entire court case. Some even came to court with me and held my hand. So just want you to know that I am not a professional. These are my thoughts and opinions, and this is shared survivor wisdom. So Take what's helpful and leave the rest. And I'm welcoming an expert with a new tool called Amy Says, and there is a free version. And I'm letting you have this free webinar to demonstrate the free version. And I'm so excited to talk about that. But first, I'd like to talk about uh, what the questions are that we have. Like, are you forced to co-parent, quote unquote, with your abusive ex? I know many of us use parallel parenting but I have some questions that I want us to ask ourselves because many of our custody cases or the post-separation abuse or the legal abuse is really domestic violence or DV issues. Um, I didn't know my case was a DV case until like five years into the legal battle and I hired an expert to do a report and they said, your case is a DV case. This is all uh, post-separation abuse and you're all afraid of him. And he was using tactics. I have a list of all the tactics that uh, were destabilizing me emotionally and coercive control and things I just didn't know uh, the names of. So first I wanna just introduce some of my work. Hang on and have hope. I write for moms who are forced to co-parent or stuck in a high conflict custody battle with a narcissist. If this is you, you are not alone. I work with moms in one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions to develop sustainable strategies. I teach my two strategies and methods of skillful means and gray walling to establish peace and protection. My books that I have can validate what you may be experiencing and give you creative ways to improve your co-parenting conditions. In my books, I include all my tips, tools, and strategies for moms to grab onto like life rafts because sometimes it's just about survival and staying afloat. So I believe there are healthy attitudes we can adopt, mindsets we can make solid, sanity to hold on to, as well as beneficial perspectives to take that can help us endure the dilemma and survive a custody battle. You can learn skillful means and strategies to navigate and neutralize the narcissist. You can even find my video program. It's 11 videos. Learn all you can from my survivor wisdom because knowledge is power. So I always say, let my chapters be like story medicine and um, let it be a healing journey from narcissistic or post-separation abuse. So my goal is to leave you with tidbits of wisdom, lots of encouragement, and all these support tools, like the Amy says today, um, so that you can survive and overcome the challenges in your co-parenting situation. Know that you can endure this and with support and these tools and be resilient in the face of many challenges when you're dealing with a narcissist. The truth is that our love for our child or our children is bigger than the narcissist. Believe in yourself as a mom and re remember to learn the valuable lessons in all the pain 
and problems to come out of this smarter and stronger than before. So like me, you can outgrow the narcissist, become immune to his attacks and move on with your life to thrive better yet. So can our precious children. So use wisdom, use these tools and lead with love. So welcome to this webinar. If you're willing and ready to learn, I am here to teach. So I do have a nonprofit and there's my website, a nonprofit that I'm starting. My first book is Co-Parenting with a Narcissist, Seven Self-Rules to Stay Sane. And in that book, I talk about getting a team of 10. In mine, a DV counselor was one of my team of 10. In book two, it's How to Fight a Narcissist in Family Court and Win, Super Smart Strategies for Success. And I still talk about getting tools like the Amy Says. I wish we had Amy Says back when I was trying to read the horrible texts, emails, our family wizard messages. I mean, eight a day accusing me of something new. I wish I had Amy Says. Thankfully, I reached out to the local DV counselors and I had someone with like 20, 30 years of experience who could unpack what was happening to me. I even had a social worker helping me read them. And back then it was kind of taboo because you didn't have that third party person like uh, that could come into your Our Family Wizard and read the back and forth. Uh, our Family Wizard, I don't you know promote that. It's just what was ordered by our judge. That's what our judge liked. There's other ones. And that's the one we have to stick with because it's in the order. My third book is Co-Parenting with a Sociopath, Survival and Sanity Guide. My fourth is How to Survive a Custody Battle when the family courts force you to co-parent. And I say, be willing to learn the lesson because if you can learn, then you can grow and you can um, change what you can. My newest book is Tame the Narcissist. No, we can't really, uh, I, I know the, the word sounds like we can make them do something, but that's not the goal. It's to know that they're, you know, an abuser abuses and uh, you really don't want to poke prod or <laughs> uh, push the beast and, and get any of that backlash. So I have 10 keys for better co-parenting to create peace and protection using strategy and skillful means. And so please, if you are in a domestic violence situation and there's a safety issue for you and your children, reach out to the National Domestic Violence Hotline because I don't do crisis work. I do more of strategy and support. So all of my books are on Amazon. If you want to take a look, my newest one has all my newest strategies. And I like to talk about skillful means and not being the target of blame because when you're the TOB, there's a lot of what I call co-parenting abuse, and what, which is really domestic violence after separation or post-separation abuse. And I talk about getting that team of 10 and that support because you want to gather supports to keep you standing. And the, the thing is, I had that team of 10 because I needed to call someone when I was at an emotional cliff. I always tell the moms and the clients, a narcissist generally wins by emotionally destabilizing the target. But if you can stay sane, which is your key, your sanity is your key there, and you can stay stable, um, then you can outlast some of the tricks and the tactics and the traps. And we do get courage through connection. So find the experts. And I'm so glad to have an expert today who I think is an expert in DV, which I am not. Um, read, study, learn, make alliances, ask for help. And now this Amy Says tool is wonderful because in the middle of the night when I'm having a panic attack and reading, I was used to reread the Our Family Wizard messages, I could have gone right to this tool and just calm down and have another set of eyes, even though it's AI, it's like having another set of eyes, which is feels protective in a way when I had my social worker reading these with me and trying to unpack the the little manipulative tactic he was using, using to falsely accuse me of something new. Um, I don't have any of that co-parenting abuse anymore. I got a, I call it a miracle. Actually, he called it a miracle. We were forced into co-parenting therapy, which usually does not work with your abuser. <laughs> I have a whole blog on how I use DFE for that. I really wish the Amy Says program was there because I have three samples I want to show you, which are common questions that I get all the time on my groups where you can post anonymously. Um, 
but my updated version to know that I did lose my legal rights in 2020. I had to get a new lawyer, chip away at everything, get her therapist back, get my rights back, get more time back, have it ordered that he can't drink on his parenting time. So I had to stage a comeback. And that's the bonus in my first book, the bonus rule. So if you want to know my message, my background is loving and leaving an alcoholic. I did not know he was a narcissist. He still has not been diagnosed, but um, you can read my free blog on my website. So I have all these blogs and all these tools like the 20 wants tool and this Amy says tool that I can't wait to show you. I'm really actually excited about this new technology. I'm not very technical, but I have a new uh, Spotify podcast because you asked for this. And I have a free email newsletter uh, full of tips, tools, and strategies uh, that you can sign up for. Those links will be down below. And I have that 11 video series because the narcissist has a lot of tricks, tactics, and traps. And thankfully, Amy says has a eyes on that. And we need the strategies, the skills, the self rules. And guess what? You can use some tools. So here is the tool to help moms in custody battles with their abuser, a narcissist. And this is the CEO of Amy Says. She's the founder. Do you want to tell us a little bit of your background first as a professional in this uh, field? Absolutely. Thank you, Grace. Uh, yes, my background is in working with women who are experiencing post-separation abuse, especially in the context of a custody battle or a custody evaluation or uh, post-decree after they have um, unfortunately been unable to um, get enough protection for themselves and their children, uh, that they continue to be exposed to that abuse going on. Um, and it was through that work and, and realizing how great the need was uh, that uh, my co-creator Stephen and I came up with an idea of you know, getting that kind of companionable expert, just like you are, Grace, into um, everyone's hands um, as quickly as possible and for free. That's wonderful. So um, is your background, what professional certificates or training have you held? I know you work directly with victims, right? Yeah, I, uh, I've i gone by way of entrepreneurism. I, I exited school leadership where I, I founded an elementary school in Denver, Colorado, uh, and transitioned out of that into direct strategic consulting. Um, my, my wisdom is earned as many others is. Uh, and uh, I don't hold specific certifications for uh, uh, working with domestic violence survivors. But well, this is great that um, you have you have this um, entrepreneurial spirit that you are going to embrace new technology like AI. And Amy says, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the Amy says um, the the mission statement, the goal? Absolutely. I mean, our goal is to provide the, the support through companionship, right, to really combat the isolation that comes with being victimized um, and help elevate the voices of people's lived experiences into a thing that someone else is willing to hear. Uh, you know, we can shout from a rooftop what we've experienced. We know what protections, you know, we and our children need. Uh, but unfortunately, um, people seem to be somewhat immune to, um, to hearing those stories. It's easy for them to deflect. Uh, so Amy um, is, a, is a translator of sorts to, to help folks tell their stories in a way that other people are willing to hear. And I say willing because I think it's somewhat intentional at times that people choose not to uh, so that um, these protective moms can, can uh, uh, get the uh, orders in place uh, that, that create enough restriction and accountability for the abuser that she can move on safely with her life and, and her children as well. That's great. So uh, just to clarify, Amy says is a website that has a chat feature that can give you free feedback instantaneously when you put something into the chat and it's all geared towards uh, domestic violence, post-separation abuse. So that's what her um, area of understanding is when you use this feature. Just want to see what we're headed to for the next um, slide because I have three samples that common questions that I get posted on my Facebook groups from moms and those three th questions I put into this chat. And you said that moms can use this and immediately click away and nothing is saved. Is that right? 
Yes, our our free version, which about 98% of the people who chat with Amy do so exactly in this fashion. It's um, it's safe, it's secure, it's confidential. And when you navigate away or refresh the page, uh, the entire chat will will be gone. So if that be aware of that, because some people are frustrated when they don't realize that they will lose their chat. Um, and you can also um, click, there's a PDF icon on the right above the chat box in order to send yourself the conversation if you found it helpful and want to be able to refer back to it. Oh, wow. I didn't see that feature. That's great. And so, yeah, 98% of your um, people use the free version and we'll probably have more videos about your paid version because it has really advanced features that lawyers can find, uh, can <laughs> the mothers who have these lawyers that will help them, the lawyers can actually use some of that. So I can't wait to talk about that in the next video. So let's go to the basic instant help that Amy says can prov provide. So it's an AI companion for victims of domestic abuse. And it is a compassionate voice. I was very surprised to hear how um, compassionate the voice is and that she asks the question. She doesn't really tell you directly instantly. It, it really does dive in a little bit. And can you talk a little bit about that? The compassion that came in, is it your voice that, that she's using? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Amy is, um, a, a near human like experience. It's all chat. Uh, that is made possible by artificial intelligence. So we have our, our mega you know, library, which is the AI partner that we use. And then we have another library of training for Amy where we've given her an identity, um, uh, helped her understand you know, what's helpful, what's not helpful. She has a library of, of excellent information to refer to to make sure she's always giving quality advice. Uh, and that personality um, of, you know, of, of validation and warmth and companionability uh, is incredibly healing. Um, it's anchoring. It, it helps combat that um, isolation. So she is she's trained in, in making sure that her responses uh, fit that criteria. Okay, so right at the homepage, people, um, women, mothers can hit the start chat now and then type in a chat box a question. So this is what happened my first sample when I opened up, Amy says from that chat, it says, hi, I'm Amy. I'm here to help you understand domestic abuse so you can heal and protect yourself and your loved ones. How are you feeling today? I love that. Can you say a little bit about the how are you feeling today that you put in there? I, uh, in this, this guest version that you're in, um, you know, Amy will always introduce herself. Um, she doesn't know who you are from one conversation to the next. And we have folks come with such a breadth of need, um, that, you know, really open ended question, like, how are you feeling today? Uh, is able to prompt just about everybody's next sentence and response. That's great. Cause yeah, we're overwhelmed. We're, we're stressed. We're fearful. So I wrote, he is sending me awful texts on our family wizard. And then Amy wrote back, do you want to read what she said? Uh, she said, I'm sorry you're experiencing this. Even on platforms meant for co-parenting, abusive behavior can occur. These texts could be a form of digital abuse and impact your emotional well-being. Documenting these messages can be important. How are you coping with these messages? And is there a safe way to limit your exposure to them? And I thought that was an excellent answer because those are the answers that I give uh, when we automatically respond in the Facebook groups, because you want to document the pattern of behavior with the date and time and not let it just trigger you into dysfunction. Um, and you want to get in touch with your feelings, right? And you want to limit the exposure. You don't want to keep rereading them the way that I did and really losing my sanity over some of the the mean emails and messages. So um, do you want to yeah. say a little bit about sample one? I thought it was an excellent um, response. Yeah, I do. Um, anyone who's watching is able to see that at the bottom of, uh, right above the chat box, there's a, a button that says evaluate message. And this is one of our most um, frequently used features. It'll always be available for free. Uh, if you click that evaluate message, Amy will come back and say, absolutely, go ahead and cut and paste the message in here. And you can directly cut paste the message into the chat. Um, she'll ask some follow-up questions to get a little bit of understanding of, of the context around that message. And then there will be another button that says generate report. 
And instantaneously, and Grace, this goes back to how triggering it was for you and how you felt like you had to go back to the messages over and over to try to, you know, make sense of the abuse that was in them. You, you hit generate report and she will instantaneously produce a, a list of all the different forms of overt and subtle coercion that are present in that message. Um, describe them, describe the impact uh, in a way that is instantaneously validating and empowering. Uh, and then a third button appears, this is draft a reply. And at that time you can click draft a reply and she will um, formulate a message in response, which you can work with her and say, you know, make it shorter, make it longer, make it Biff, make it gray rock, uh, whatever you'd like, um, or don't forget to add this. Um, and she'll make sure that that message is de-escalating, um, that you didn't take the bait, that it's non-emotional, that it's focused on a child, uh, et cetera, to just really take the sting out of that constant exposure to the abuser's narrative. That That is excellent. I mean, for those of you who don't know what Biff is, Biff is a book by Bill Eddy called, where the title means Brief, Informative, Friendly, and Firm. And I read that book to start trying to communicate with my high conflict ex. And of course, gray rock means like being boring and bland. And I talk about drop the tug of war, drop the rope, uh, let some things go. I mean, my lawyer always said, just say that's not true to deny whatever it is once in a blanket statement. Um, but sometimes doing that can trigger them to do more or, or make it bigger or meaner or whatever. So you definitely have to check with your lawyer sometimes on how to respond to the messages. My lawyer was great. My second lawyer was great. He really helped me say, well, don't say you're going to cancel <laughs> his visitation. Just say, can we reschedule and make it sure it's all in one text? Because sometimes those texts get used against you in family court. So when you're drafting a message with Amy says, I, I, I my second recommendation besides using this tool first to to calm down um because that's what it did it gave me a calming experience of okay um yeah this is what it is it's validating is to you know run it by your lawyer especially if you're going to make uh, statements or um requests or dem <laughs> demands or whatever i you just want to be careful that uh you're running your strategy by your attorney and make sure it's all on the, the same line. So that's, I didn't even know you could evaluate a message. And now I do see the PDF down here. So this was, this was excellent. And I, I really, I liked uh, how this works. So thank you for this tool. And I'll move on to the, the next sample. This is a question I often get. Um, this is what he said. I'm not giving you back your child. Do you want to read what Amy said? Yeah, she said, this statement is a form of course of control and emotional abuse. It uses intimidation and fear to exert power over you by threatening your relationship with your child. How are you currently handling this situation? And then I get the moms who say, do I call CPS or do I call the police? And of course, I called CPS, which is Child Protective Services, so many times that all of them got used against me in the trial to make me look like a crazy micromanaging, uh, complaining mom. So I wrote, do I call the police? Do you want to read what Amy said? She said, if you believe your child's safety is at risk, or if there is a legal custody agreement being violated, contacting the police may be necessary. It can also be helpful to consult with a legal professional to understand your rights and options. What feels safest for you right now? And that was an excellent response because sometimes it is about, it has, safety has to be first. So sometimes the thing that moms were telling other moms, we don't allow direct advice giving anymore, we're, you know, call the police. And some of that would escalate and then it would have a very unsafe stalking situation. So I love the what feels safest for you right now. And, you know, as a coach who helps these moms, it's almost like, well, what feels doable? Because they're so overwhelmed that they really can't even pick up the phone to call the lawyer or the police. They really need mm -hmm. some one-on-one -on -one, uh, validation and emotional support because that the courage we get is through connection. So connecting with another survivor or their counselor, or their therapist can give them the courage to pick up the phone and ask their lawyer, what are my rights and, and such. Do you want to add anything else to this uh, sample? 
Uh, you know, if you continue to conversation like this, because you can you can talk forever, she's inexhaustible, um, you might explore other options. You could say, what are my other options? She might say, you know, have you considered this, this, or this? Maybe one of those is is responding to his message about not giving back the child. You know, do you want to try to draft a response um, uh, to that message? You could cut and paste your court orders in. This is what my court orders say. Can you draft a response that that includes the, the stipulations about parenting time in the court order. Um, and think through, like, how do I plan? If he doesn't respond to this, then what's my next step? Um, you know, very few people are able to get a hold of their attorney instantly um, or to, um, the, very few people even have an attorney, especially post-decree as this looks like it might be. Uh, it, you can talk to Amy about all sorts of options and then plan out what each of those options might look like. Uh, and, you know, these kind of tend to be live situations, uh, you know, come back and, and continue the conversation to get all the support that you need. That's excellent. I love that it's inexhaustible because, you know, <laughs> moms are, are in fear. And so there's all these fears, worries, and anxiety running through your head. Well, what about this? What about that? And, you know, sometimes referencing the court order when I said something to him is like our court order, paragraph three, sentence two says blah 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 that just gave the abuser something to i mean he he had no problem violating court orders not paying child support sometimes if i would reference it he would blatantly not follow it because they don't like uh following authority figures mm -hmm. and so i learned you know that's why i came up with skillful means how to just uh, use like nonviolent communication to deescalate and and attempt to get along and resolve it in um, a non sometimes I guess the the more you assert yourself to an abuser, the more abuse you can get. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Uh, yeah, I, I think it runs the gamut. I think some people, um, uh, some abusers uh, don't necessarily fit that mold. Um, and the idea that there could be some accountability for them uh, uh, does change and, and course correct. Uh, but it takes a lot for a person who has essentially erased their boundaries in order to you know make the relationship work for a long time to start reestablishing those boundaries consistently enough to, to be able to get some peace and, and a sense of control over their lives. It is not a short game. Absolutely. Uh, but ultimately we, you know, I always want parents to get to a point um, where kind of appropriate uh, healthy boundaries um, are maintained. Yeah. It, and I agree with all that because I have this gray walling method I use. I call it a castle and curtain where I think that's why castles will, were built <laughs> in the first place. You need these big, thick walls all the way around you. And I talk about being a curtain because um, I talk about the back and forth. Like right now, he's throwing a Super Bowl. I am not giving you back your child. If you know anything about super bouncy balls, if you hit them off a hard surface, they go wild and crazy. Mm -hmm. And so um, I talk about being a curtain because if you throw a super ball against a curtain, it just drops. So um, those are some of my, you know, survivor strategies. They're not scient scientifically proven methods, but it's some of the things that I came up with just to survive the situation to not be in an ego battle or a tug of war, you know, with the, um, my ex, the, the narcissist. So, um, yeah, we'll move on to sample three. Cause I didn't realize it could just keep going inexhaustibly. I stopped there. So if this resonates with you, just know there's more options. Uh, you can have actually draft, responses. And I always say, draft them, read them for tone, have somebody look at them and see how the tone is. I know the Our Family Wizard has a tone meter that will show red and 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 if it's conflictual to help you draft those two. Um, mm -hmm. But there's nothing like another per person who says, who says, oh yeah, this could rub me the wrong way. Maybe say that in a softer way. So sample <laughs> number three. My ex is threatening to take me to court. That's one I hear all the time. You can read what Amy says. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Legal threats can be a form of control and intimidation. Has your ex previously used legal actions to manipulate or harass you? Or is this a new development? And I wrote, he is taking me to family court before. 
That sounds very distressing. When dealing with legal threats, especially if they've been used against you before, it's crucial to have support. Are you currently working with an attorney or do you need guidance on finding legal assistance? And that was great because um, if the war is in family court, the weapons are lawyers and it's paper bullets, it's motions, it's subpoenas, it's filings. And so if you're going into that arena, you want to go in properly represented, even doing free legal consultations can get your burning legal questions answered. Because if if the narcissist is filing, you probably have a right to counter file. So like moms forget that part. Like you don't have to just go into court on the defense. You can go in with an offense and find leverage. And I, I talk about that in all of my books and blogs. So I love that it's talking about finding legal assistance. What is the next step? Does it give you um, how to find local domestic violence legal aid? What is the next step usually in this chat? I, I mean, absolutely. Um, she doesn't make direct uh, attorney referrals, so she's likely going to refer you to a variety of organizations that can make those referrals for counsel. Um, but when it comes to like legal aid organizations, um, some organizations offer unbundled services or, you know, we do these portions of custody or, you know, protection order. She can make direct referrals to to those organizations and additional support uh, organizations that are local to you or that work nationally. Great. And and for moms that need to consult with a lawyer, I do have a 20 question attorney interview worksheet. And um, it just has all the questions you would want to ask. And I put that as a bonus chapter in book one. And I put that as a, another bonus chapter in my latest book, because it's such a helpful tool to have the questions you would want to be asking the lawyer. You'd, you want to know if they know your judge. You want to know if they're even available on your pre-trial hearing date or your court trial date. Th those are just questions that escape your mind when you're dealing with all the problems and conflict that the abuser presents. So I do have that as a tool. And now I think we're going to give you the reins to do a, a screen share it's so that you could walk us through your website and um, do you have that option now to do? I do. I do. I'll pull up. So the examples that you gave, Grace, are, you know, some of those early on questions that we uh, expect um, panicked protective parents to have. Um, and the things I'm going to show are just a little bit more about the companionability of Amy um, and, and a little bit more in breadth in terms of what you can talk about. So um, we have, can you see my screen here? I can't see um, your screen, so I wonder if I have to turn something off on my end. Maybe. Um, so okay. I'm sharing my screen, and that that deck is highlighted. So. Oh, gotcha. I see it now. Okay, great. Um, so again, she's going to start with the hi. I'm Amy. Um, how are you feeling today? And I said here, I'm about to see my ex at our child's school conference, and I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack. Uh, you know, there are points when when you guys have to see each other often and it can just be really, really just dis distressing. She says, I'm sorry to hear you're feeling this way. It's understandable given the circumstances. Is there someone you trust who can attend the conference with you for support? Or perhaps there are strategies we can discuss to help you manage your anxiety during the meeting. I said, it's too late to have anyone there with me. Yes. How can I manage my anxiety? She said, consider practicing some deep breathing before and during the conference. You're going to focus on taking slow, deep breaths to calm your nervous system. You can ground yourself by focusing on your surroundings or an object in the room. Remind yourself that you are in control of your reactions um, and can leave if it becomes overwhelming. Does this help? And I thought I would just leave. So I, what do you mean? How would I just leave? So you can plan an exit strategy beforehand. We sit near the door for easy access. And if you feel overwhelmed, excuse yourself politely, citing a need for fresh air or a brief break. Practice what you'll say, like, I need a moment, I'll be right back. This can help you feel more prepared. Does this sound feasible? I said, yeah, that sounds good. It just makes me so nervous because he always looks like a great dad at these things, but he never does anything to support our child. I feel like just being there is a gaslight. She said, it's frustrating when appearances don't match reality, especially when it feels like gaslighting. Remember that you know the truth about your situation. Focus on your child's needs and your role in supporting them. How do you feel about focusing on your child during the conference to help manage these feelings? I asked her for some examples. 
Uh, she uh, gave some examples of concentrating on the discussion, taking some notes, or maybe even preparing some questions to ask, uh, and that the focus can help shift the tension to the child and away from the ex. I said, my child is seven. What questions might I have prepared? And Amy produced a list of four questions that I can have prepared before I go into that meeting. So throughout this conversation, I was able to express my feelings. You know, it's valid fear. There's PTSD here. I'm going to be in a room with this person. The stakes feel high, you know, because it's in front of the teacher. And I've, I've gotten uh, strategies for calming my breathing, a strategy for where to sit in the room, a strategy for where to willfully kind of focus my attention, take notes, come in prepared, some questions to ask on behalf of my child. Um, so here is kind of a scope uh, example of a single conversation that runs through a variety of the needs, um, urgent, you know, like going into this conference in 10 minutes, um, needs that, that a, a survivor might have. That's excellent. Yeah, that I'm so glad it focused on the child. That's my newest post is don't focus on the narcissist, focus on the child. And I love that you're talking about pre-planning and that our child's therapist actually told us, get a plan ahead of time. What are you going to do ahead of time? OK, so if you become so stressed out, just say, oh, I have to take a call. I'll be right back and go with a notebook. I teach that to all my moms so that you could take notes, because if you're in PTSD, it's really hard to remember what was said at these meetings. And you might need a date of a school project that's due, like the science project. And, that, and then you actually talk about that was so helpful that I would keep focusing on the, our child when I was mm -hmm. meeting with parent teachers groups, um, those meetings, because then it stopped being about me versus him. It was like, okay, yeah. what does our child need? So I love that. That's great. Yeah. And naturally, I mean, if we're in a room, we're going to focus on the threat in the room, right? Like we are, are having to willfully overcome our psychology. <laughs> to to maintain focus where is most appropriate because that sense of threat is present but in this conversation it's i don't have an attorney because i can't afford one i'm representing myself i have no idea where to start but i need to file a motion to change parenting time uh and amy's response is is uh, uh about how she's going to start a conversation about obtaining the forms from the local family court She's asked me if I'm comfortable sharing what state or region I'm in, um, then that can help her provide some more specific information. Uh, I told her I'm in Denver, Colorado. She says, in Denver, you can file a motion to modify through the district in your jurisdiction, and here's a basic outline. And it's a, let's see, a five-step process from forms through the attendance of the hearing. Um, she recommends local legal aid organizations that might um, provide free or low-cost service and asks if I want some information about those resources. Uh, instead, I asked for the website. So she gave me the website for the Col Colorado Judicial Branch where I can find uh, the forms that I'm going to need. Um, the, her ability to support um, the form uh, completion is also wonderful. Um, and, you know, when you have the form and you come back and say, this is, this is, you know, these are, can you help me organize my thoughts to fill out this part of the form? Uh, she can help you do that as well. Um, and again, yeah. she's stay child focused um, and help you tell your story in the most um, compelling, um, de-escalating child focused way. That's great. And I really think like what, what could be really helpful to ask Amy is what are the best interest factors of my state and have as a mom, as a protective mom, focus on those, like pin them up somewhere, ask Amy, I'm sure she, she can do that, right? What are the best yep. interest factors of Colorado? Because when you know them, it'll help you move your focus towards those. And that's what a judge is having to uh, look at. So mm -hmm. do you have another example? Yeah, I do. And, and back to the one you just mentioned, you can also say, you know, in, in the state of Colorado, what's necessary for a, a modification in parenting time? Um, and she's just she's pulling statute for you. It's all things that you could find online. Uh, except it's in one place. Uh, you're not going to have to dig around for it. It feels more confidential and private uh, in this little um, sphere that Amy creates. In this last conversation, I'm not going to lie, I actually got misty eyed this morning when I produced it for this, um, uh, this podcast today, because who has not had this moment and needed um, this kind of um, support and companionship? So she comes, mom says, I'm exhausted. I feel depressed. I do not even know what to make for dinner tonight. And Amy comes back and, you know, you're going through a tough time. 
Sometimes even small decisions are overwhelming when you're exhausted. Is there someone you can reach out to who might be able to make a, a simple meal idea or bring you some food? I said, I don't want to reach out. I just want dinner to appear magically. I know that won't happen. I have frozen chicken breasts and some vegetables. What should I make? And, and Amy has recommended a sheet pan dinner, putting the frozen chicken breasts and vegetables on the baking sheet, some olive oil, salt, pepper, herbs. And she told me how long to bake it, at what temperature, uh, and asked me if that sounds manageable. And I said, that does sound doable. How can I make the dinner feel special for my kids? They're seven and nine. I've been so drained and I don't know, or I know they want to connect with me. And she said, creating a special atmosphere can be simple. You could set up a fun picnic style dinner in the living room floor or make a cozy table setting with candles or fairy lights. Maybe involve them in the process by letting them arrange the vegetables or choose a special song to play during dinner. How does that sound? And that right there, the ability to take the exhausted, battered, sometimes literally mother uh, and mother, really your, your soul as a mother and to help stoke just a little bit into it. So you, even as exhausted as you are, can create this special moment of connection with your child or children is so powerful and so healing. Uh, and you know, that's the feeling that we want people to walk away with when they talk to Amy is that they feel taller, um, they feel clearer, they feel uh, more enabled, um, they feel like they have more agency um, to try to get a break from the, the real onslaught of the continuiza continuization of victimization uh, and the healing that has to happen after the relationship ends. That's really nice. I, my daughter and I have, uh, we actually put on the Hogwarts YouTube music. We really love Harry Potter and we, we have dinner uh, to uh, Chinese lantern lights. So that's, that's really beautiful because those dinner times can be a place to relax. And I often, I just order pizza. I'm sure Amy will say that at some point, if I, we kept going, it's like, I can't, there's no, she's so sick of ramen noodles. <laughs> We've been legally abused. So there's very little money. Um, I'm, I'm sure like Amy will say, you know, can you, you find ramen? Um, but I, you know, in my situation, we had to go to um, food pantries. And if the food pantry, you know, had all these days and requirements, there would be the mobile food truck. And then because we're gluten and dairy free, we'd have to go to the church. And then eventually there were some funds to get um, cards. What are they called? Gift cards to grocery stores so we could buy the gluten and dairy free. So like be resourceful. And I love that Amy is part of being resourceful. I, I mean, that was the key to my survival was I was willing to ask for help, willing to go to programs, go to parenting classes, willing to reach out in the community for supports. And, and Amy is directing you to reach out for the community supports. And I love this. And it's educational. It's an empowerment tool. It's a support tool. So thank you so much for uh, this uh, presentation. Those are your three, right? Uh, those are the three examples that I had ready. Great. Um, so we'll just wrap up this uh, presentation. So the next one, if you want to stop your screen share, the next one, we will cover what um, the what your program, Amy says, can do. Let's go back to our presentation here. What she can do in the paid versions. So um, currently you said it's like a, a monthly and I hope that my foundation that I'm starting can provide vouchers. So this is like webinar one of maybe three, four or five of what this tool can do to help support mothers and the National Domestic Violence Hotline. I just want to leave that here. Um, I have had to call warm lines before when I was so stressed out dealing with co-parenting abuse. Uh, or which is post-separation abuse. So the hotline.org is the one that we're sending you to for those 24-hour uh, helps, the national, and they have a phone, a chat, and a text, and this website, and you can immediately exit with the red box at the top right. So I love that they're even embracing technology, the National Domestic Violence hotline. And that's, you know, part of what Amy says is, is that AI technology based um, geared towards, you know, survivors. But if you need somebody professional, this hotline with their chat and their 24 hour people, I mean, 
I've had moms in all kinds of crisis situations, and I have to refer them here for crisis support. So I'm glad that your program does the same thing um, because we can't always do it on our own. So thank you so much for being here with this. I want to talk about, uh, I talked about that gray walling method. I talk about, um, there's a, a healing uh, PDF or chapter I have that you can heal. So I'm sure Amy says we'll, we'll empower you to find healing and maybe therapeutic supports or any of those free 12-step uh, recovery programs. And I'm sure Amy will probably tell you what to document. She sounds very strategic like me. I'm a strategist now. I'm not a sur just a survivor. I what? How are we going to document strategically? And that's what I... I teach moms and um, being careful about just, you know, saying no to the abuser and getting what I call the boundary backlash. And I'm so glad that you could take the boundary backlash from the abuser, copy paste it to Amy and she could have something to say about it. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. brilliant. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, using Amy can be part of your strategies. So I talk about the need for multiple strategies, so documentation strategy, support strategy, legal strategy, offense, defense strategy, a parenting strategy, and that communication strategy. So this could, Amy says, can really be a strategy for the stress, for the stress, the crisis, the, you know, upset. Um, and I, wa I want to talk about uh, strategies next, but this newest book is on Amazon. And I want to get to the last slide because I'm hoping that the foundation that I'm starting can give vouchers to moms, or maybe we can partner in some way when we raise money that moms can buy the paid version using the vouchers from my foundation. And that's on the last slide that I'm trying to get to. But if you want to check my YouTube channel, so if you're watching this on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe. It, down in the comments will be the link to Amy Says website, will be the link to my mom's groups, the link to the co-parenting video, the link to all of my books. And um, I also talk about getting a lawyer and how it is uh, very empowering because sometimes our child custody case is only as good as our attorney. And I like that Amy says directs you to finding those legal supports. I have that Get the Right Lawyer Guide. It'll be down in the comments with the 20 question attorney interview worksheet. And, you know, there's many layers of abuse tactics. And I like that Amy can give you a list of them. I didn't even get that far. That, that was exciting to hear you say in my first sample that she will go through the types of abuse and list it. And mm -hmm. here we are at this nonprofit because. And I think it's Benjamin Franklin that said like a, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of a cure. And if we can prevent child abuse and neglect, um, if we can protect the children, we'll have less traumatized children. So I say like, you know, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of this pain. And uh, many family courts aren't putting child safety first. I can't deal any, do with anything with the judges. <laughs> I'm not down in Washington trying to make new laws. There's moms doing all different levels of handling the problems with family court. And so my foundation is going to be to support and bolster the motivated, protective, loving mothers. And this tool really lines up with my mission <clears throat> because most of the time it's mothers who can't afford my coaching, who can't afford my programs. Of course, I give many scholarships out for free. And hopefully we could have a um, an allotment of like vouchers to get your program, uh, the paid version, which I know offers a lot more to help with the legal side of things. So are you open to doing another uh, webinar for the other ver uh, parts of your AI tool? Yes, absolutely. Let's do one where we we peek behind the, the curtain at the documentation features, the ability to upload documents and talk to Amy about those. And, um, you know, if you, for people who have ongoing custody battles or a high risk of, of being back in an active case, uh, uh, the, the subscription model really can provide a lot of reassurance. That's great. That's excellent. Thank you so much for being here. I just want to say I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy founder, entrepreneur, having to do a lot of meetings. And I just thank you for your time. I want to stop sharing my video for a second here.
and absolutely and, and thank you and power to all you mamas out there uh it's the fight of your life um but you're not alone yeah they're not alone there's tools and resources out there and i always say remember you can <clears throat> learn heal and outgrow the narcissist and you can come out of this smarter and stronger than before so stay tuned look in the link below because if we do a video too i'll put it in the link to this uh free webinar number one and uh give us some feedback in the comments if you use the tool you love the tool if there's a way to post anonymously always you know safeguard your custody case you probably don't want to tell the abuser or your ex, you're using this tool. You want to keep what I say, your cards close to your vest. You don't want to reveal, uh, you know, everything that's helping you. You don't want things used against you. So, you know, you might tell your, your DV counselor, your lawyer, your therapist, that this is a tool that's helping you or other moms in my uh, in-person support groups. Um, so keep this, you know, safe, safeguard your tools and your resources so they can't be attacked. And, um, I'm really thankful for you and thank you for developing this and offering a free version. I really, uh, we all appreciate it and we'll see you in the next, uh, webinar. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.